What's up, YouTube? It is your boy, JB, and we are here with the week's hottest topics. Now, I believe this is number 38. Yep, this is number 38 of the week's hottest topics. So, this, these are going to be the hot topics or what's trending for the week of May, May 2nd. <laughs> May 2nd through May the 7th, you guys. Wow, this week has gone by really fast. I mean, Monday I had my job interview, and then after that, the week just went by. I didn't even realize that today was Thursday, which I always record. Now I'm recording these videos on Thursday, but I didn't realize it was Thursday, and I wish my neighbors would sit the fuck down. But, you guys, let's go ahead and just talk about what's trending and what's hot this week. Got a lot of stuff to talk about. Not really, but I got some things that I want to talk about, so let's. All right, you guys, actually, the first thing that I think I want to talk about is going to be Erica Mena and Safari. I don't even need my notes for this. Um, So Erica Mena. So it was revealed on social media that she and Safari are expecting baby number two. And, you know, babies are a blessing and congratulations go out to Erica and Safari. Like, that is a big blessing to have another baby. Now... I don't agree with people attacking them on social media. That's not something that I would say do. Attack them, you know, come at them about having a baby. They're married. Yes, marriage, you know, in a marriage, in a marriage, you have your ups and downs in the marriage. Now, with Eric and Safari, which I don't even know if they've been married. Have they been married two years at this point? I think they might be just shy of two. They may just hit two or two or three. They ain't been married that long, but we all know that Eric and Safari has a whole host of issues that they put on social media for everyone to see what's going on in their marriage. You guys remember Safari made that post about, you know, getting married was the biggest mistake he made and Erica chimed in and like I said, they just have issues within their marriage. So you do congratulate them about their marriage, but Erica now her face her face looks so different these days i'm like girl what are you doing to your face so she got on social media and she reacted to people who had negative comments to say now she didn't say anything too bad but she did come back after she saw wendy williams show and wendy williams had a com you know had some comments to make about erica and safari now you know she said she doesn't know erica but she knows safari and she what she what wendy said was i mean i didn't think wendy said anything detrimental to Erica or Safari she just said that what I just said when it comes to Erica and Safari they put their relationship on social media and when you put your relationship on social media people are going to have opinions now you can choose to ignore the opinions or whatever but people have their opinions on social media so Wendy said one like she said they you know they put their marriage on display for everyone to see now, if you guys are going to get divorced, get divorced and being great co-parents to one another, you know, co-parents to your two kids together. Or if you're going to get stay together, do that. But she also did say that babies, they don't save a marriage, which that is 100 percent true. So Erica, like I said, she got wind of that interview. Well, well, that that clip of Wendy and Erica felt some type of way. Erica said that, you know, she wants to beat Wendy's ass the way her husband, ex-husband didn't beat her ass. I'm like, well, God damn. And she doubled down on it. And I'm like, really, Erica? That's So you are advocating for domestic violence, right? No, that's not what we do. Like, have your issues with Wendy, but don't sit there and say, you're going to beat her ass the way her husband, ex-husband didn't beat her ass. That's disrespectful as fuck, Erica. Like, come on, you know that. And then, um, like I said, she doubled down on it. She says, what did she say? What offends you doesn't offend me or something like that. It doesn't affect me. And she put effect, E-F-F-E-C-T, and it's actually effect. It doesn't affect me. But, you know, go on ahead, Erica. Go off. Go off. But, um, yeah, I don't think Wendy said anything that was bad. Now, you guys can let me know in the comment section if you guys believe that Wendy said anything that could be perceived as a negative to Erica. I didn't see it. Now, now, if you guys, again, like I said, if you guys saw something that I didn't see, let me know in the comment section below. We can definitely discuss it. But definitely want to give a congratulations to Erica and Safari. Now, that picture that she had looked like she was, I mean, looked like she was pretty far in her pregnancy. Looked like she could be at least a good five or six months pregnant, if not further than that. But 
Congratulations to Erica Safari and their bouncing baby that'll be here pretty soon. So let's. All right, you guys, let's talk about the verses real quick. And then the next two stories that I'm going to talk about are dealing with two members of Escape. So you guys know that this Sunday is Mother's Day. So I'm going to give I'm going to say it now, but I'm also going to say it on Sunday because I don't know what time my videos will be up on Sunday. But I want to say happy Mother's Day to all the mothers, um, you know, who are subscribed to my channel. Happy Mother's Day. I hope your kids do something fantastic for you guys. Mothers, God, love you. I love, you know, I just love mothers. Because just, you know, women do a lot. They sacrifice a lot. I'm not saying men don't either, but a mother. There's no love like a mother's love, and I know, you know, I'm with my, I'm in my mother. The love was unconditional. Who I deeply and dearly miss her and my grandmother. So that's actually what I'm doing this weekend. I'm actually going home on Saturday morning sometime, and then I'm gonna go, you know, put some flowers on my mother and my grandmother's graves on Sunday, and head back home so I can watch the verses with you guys, and do Real Housewives of Atlanta. That's, I wonder how that's gonna work. So I'm wondering if this verse is, is going to come on after Real Housewives of Atlanta goes off. But damn, you got Real Housewives of Atlanta, you got the verses, you got Married to Medicine, and you got Pose. Uh, I'm going to have a long night ahead of me on Sunday. But we'll get through it. But the verses, like I said, that's what we're talking about, the verses. The verses is this Sunday between Escape and between SWV. Let me know if you guys are going to be watching the verses. Let me know who you guys are going for. Or do you got... Let me actually, not who you're going for. Let me know in the comment section, which group do you like more? Are you a bigger Escape fan or are you a SWV fan? Now for me, it's a twofold. It's a twofold because I absolutely love SWV. Love me some SWV. Love me some SWV, but I love Escape as well. Oh God, if they are singing live, oh, 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 we gonna have to hear Latasha and Coco, <laughs> them big ass voices, Coco and Latasha. But I'm here for it. Though. Now with the verses, I really wonder is Tiny gonna show up with all this stuff that is going on with her and Ti at this point. I mean, I hope she does show up. But if Tiny shows up, I really think that Instagram and Triller, Thriller, whatever it's called, I really feel that they should turn the comments off if. That is something that they can do. I think that they should turn the comments off because I, I know, I don't know, I feel, I feel that certain people are going to take the, you know, we can joke, we can laugh and we can joke about things, but what Tiny and T.I. are going through right now, that's not a laughing matter and that's not a joking matter. And I don't think that that should be in the comment section. So I hope that people just, if she does show up, I hope people are respectful like come here let's listen to the music let's listen to them talk whatever they gonna do let's do that and let's let whatever is going on in her personal life stay there if it's on social media let it stay on social media but don't bring it in the comment section so that's where i'm at but um when it, like i said when it comes down to it, the groups i'm 50 50 50 50 because Escape has some great songs that I definitely love, but like I said, when it comes down to it, SWV is just a little bit higher than Escape, not that much higher, but it's a little bit. But um, yeah, so the next stories are gonna be dealing with um, Tiny and Candy. So let's move on, you guys. All right, you guys, so I think I'm going to talk about Candy next. Yeah, let's talk about Candy real quick. So Candy did an interview brief this past week she did an interview with Eddie Levert. So Eddie Levert asked her some question. He was he was interviewing her, and one of two questions that he asked her was, "Who were some artists that she's worked with that were her favorite, and who was her least favorite?" And I think she said her favorite. I think she said her top her some of her favorites was like, you know, TLC and Destiny's Child. So then she went on. He asked her to tell who her least favorite was, and he says, "You have to answer that question." Honestly, I wish Candy would have just said no comment. You know, I, I really wish she could have said that or or anything. It's, she could have she could have went a different route with answering that question. You know, she could have said, you know, I may have had a bad experience with a group or a, a particular artist, 
But damn, I don't know how she could have avoided that without saying no comment. Now she definitely could have said no comment, but I'm just trying to think of an easier way to spin that. I'm just trying to think of an easier way that she could have spun that. But she did say she said um boys to men. So he wanted her to elaborate on what the issue was. Now she said he said, was it the attitudes? And she said yes. And then she said she had never been disrespected like she was with boys to men. But again, like I said, I just kind of wish Candy had said no comment to that to that question. And I'm just still once again thinking how you know, and you know, I think one way she could have flipped it is, you know, I had a bad experience with boys to men, but you know, no, nah, I wouldn't even I really wouldn't have mentioned them. I would have said no comment. I would have been like, I know Eddie, like I know you said you want me to answer the question, but me being the professional that I am, I don't want to answer that question because that could ruin working relationships going forward with anybody. Because if they if they feel that, you know, you know, if I had a bad experience with them, if I had a bad experience with one person and then I come and have an experience with them and it's not so pleasant, will I then go out and blast them? So I wish she could have said something to that nature, but she said voice to men. So then Juan Ye Morris, he did an interview and he addressed it. Now at first, his interview, he didn't say anything too significantly bad about Candy, but I, much like what I just said about Candy, I wish Juan Ye had said, you know what, no comment because at first he was saying he didn't know what you know he didn't know what had been said but the two people who was interviewing him one the guy said something and then whoever was in his background they mentioned what candy said so then he said oh okay so he said yeah you know we did have a situation in the studio once before where we were writing a song we hadn't even sang anything on the song but after we start finished writing she was talking about splits so I guess it came down to a situation of money. Okay, that's not something that's uncommon. People, if someone works on something with you, they're gonna want their money. So they don't, like, if I'm working on a song with you, if I'm co-writing a song with you, I'm going to ask you, like, how are we gonna split the money up? Like, like I wanna know that. Like, I wanna know logistically, what do I get from this? How much am I, what percentage am I getting from this? Like, I want to know that. Like, you don't go into any kind of business relationship not knowing what you're going to get and, you know, what to expect. But Wanye is trying to say that they from a different school. I'm like, okay, Wanye, I don't care about that. But then he went further. Now, see, this is where he lost me. Like, you didn't have to go into this tirade about what has she done since then, you know, since working with TLC and working with Destiny's Child. Well, I mean, I know she, I know she, I know she and Tiny got writers credits on Ed Sheeran's song "Shape of Me," so she got some money from that. She, I think she's worked on Ariana Grande song. I'm not, I think she worked on Ariana Grande song. Um, she worked with that country artist Jody Medina or something like that on Real Housewives of we saw that on Real Housewives of Atlanta. Um, what else has she, I mean, she's done so much, like, for him to sit there and discredit her. And even if she, even if you want to say, hey, she might not be doing anything musically these days, the girl is still working. Candy has her, you know, her dungeon party, Real Housewives of Atlanta. She's on, um, she was on The Masked Singer. She was on, <laughs> she was on Mass Singer. She was, she's on The Shy. Now, as shady as he was, we know Candy is not the best singer. She yodels. We know that. So he was talking about she can't sing out sing certain people. We know Candy is not the best singer. No one's ever said she was. But for Wanye, I just felt like with Wanye going in that direction, I'm like, dude, you look kind of bitch made to be quite honest with you. Just like I said with Candy, she could have said no response. Wanye, you literally could have said zero, zip let it let it be because she didn't really say nothing negative about you guys and if we're being honest other people have said you guys were terrible to work with dallas austin has said you guys are terrible to work with but you didn't come at dallas but you come at and nobody else from the group has said anything it's just wanye like dude sit down calm your tits 
you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm talking about Wanye, and I was looking at him with that video. He kept moving his hands. He, he does this with his hands. He talks with his hands, and I talk with my, and I'm talking with my hands. But yeah, Wanye could have just easily said, no comment. That wouldn't have been the best. I think that would have been the best response for actually both Wanye and for Candy, just simply saying, no response. Sometimes no response is better than anything. But you know, it is what it is. But um, let me know what you guys thought about Candy's comments and Wanye's comments, and we will discuss it in the comment section below. Let's move on. Next up, you guys, let's discuss Shekinah. Shekinah! In the words of, um, what's her name? Kia, Kaya. Shekinah. Shekinah, 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 Shekinah. You would think you would have learned your lesson the last time you got on live and addressed, talked about T.I. and Tiny's, whatever they're going through. So she kind of decided that she going to get on that app, Bigo, Bingo, Bigo, B-I-G-O. Is it pronounced Bigo? However that app is pronounced, she got on there and she wanted to address her friendship or lack thereof with Tiny. You know, with friends like Shekinah, who needs an enemy? Like, seriously, I would just never be friends with someone that is like a Shekinah Joe. Period. Point blank. Because the girl, if she gets mad at you, she's just going to put your business out there on, on front and central. So she addressed why she and Tiny are not friends. She's also talking about the fact that you guys remember earlier when Shekinah did that one live about this whole situation that's going on with T.I. and Tiny. She talked about that. But then in this live, she said that her friend was right there beside her telling her what to say. But when everybody came at her and attacked her, she didn't defend her. <laughs> you know, I, really, I mean, honestly, why would you, I mean, why would you even get involved? It had nothing to do with you. And like you said, you got drug for filth by people on social media. Sometimes mind, I mean, not sometimes, all the time, minding your business is free. But with me, if if that were me, I would never. I don't know what to believe. I don't know if I. I don't know to believe to Shekinah or if, you know, I don't know what to believe. Oops, my bad, y'all. Didn't mean to burp me out face. But I'm trying to put myself in her shoes. So let's say my friend, my best friend, of we've been friends for what sixteen? Years? This should be sixteen, or will it be seventeen years? Sixteen, seventeen years. My best friend came to me and she in a situation where she needs me to speak up for her. Uh, I gotta think about what I speak up for my best friend. It depends on the situation. If it's a situation like this, I'm gonna be like, you know what, I love you, I can be a character, you know, if you need me in court, I'll absolutely be a character witness. But as far as me going on social media, trying to defend, saying that you didn't do this when it's something that I don't know, I'm not gonna put myself in a situation that I don't know what happened, what didn't happen, I'm not gonna do that. But if you need a character witness, 100%, I'm like, I got your back. I got your back, I'll definitely say, you know, I'll definitely attest to the person that I know that you are, and I don't think that you would do something like, I don't, you know, the person that I know would never do something like that. But as far as me going on social media, just outright defending my friend and saying, she didn't do this, she didn't do that. Hell, I don't know what you did and didn't do, so I'm not gonna sit here and lie. Absolutely not. So if Shekinah was in the, if she was in that position and Tiny asked her to say those things on social media, I would have told Tiny, absolutely not, girl. Like if you wanted, if you want me to say that, why don't you get on live and speak your piece? Because at the time when it first came out, I don't think that anything, I don't think legal action had been taken at that point. No, I don't think legal action had been taken at, at that point. But even so, here's an, an, an here's another thinking, think the thing that I'm thinking about. Even still, if no legal action had been taken at that point, why would you tell your friend to get on live to address it? That's stupid because that could be when if it goes to court, which is which which is a legal issue now. You have to deal with so many ramifications from that. Like one is that could be used in court because you put it in the you put it out there for everybody to see it so it is now public knowledge and if a lawyer if the lawyer sees that they can be like oh let's add that to you know all the evidence that we have that has been addressed 
it just it's stupid on all parts but I, I once again like i said i just wish shakana would have just shut up and mind her business it's free it's free mind your business i think shakana needs help <laughs> i think she needs to go get a no shade not being funny or anything i think shakana might need to go get an mental evaluation because something ain't right with her it's just something not right <laughs> Is I'm not right with her because I'm la I'm not laughing about that. I'm laughing because I was thinking about her when she got on live and she cried about the Gucci store last year when she was crying about the fucking Gucci store when it was getting looted and I'm like, girl, Gucci. <laughs> That's what I was laughing at, not her in general. I was just laughing at her crying about the motherfucking Gucci store. But let me know what you guys think about Shakana and Tiny. <sighs> Sometimes shutting up is the best option. Let's move on. All right, you guys, let us discuss the Tokyo Olympics. So the Tokyo Olympics, well, since I said it, you guys know the Olympics this year are being held over there in Tokyo, Japan, correct? So today it came out that they have placed a ban on the athletes and the athletes will not be able to wear apparel that has Black Lives Matter on it, which doesn't, I mean, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I do hate the fact that people are politicizing everything. If it's not the ma the masks are getting politicized, the, you know, the vaccines, they've been politicized. The COVID itself has been politicized. Like everything has been politicized thanks to the last administration. So like I said, t Tokyo. The whole thing is they don't want for the athletes to wear the Black Lives Matter apparel, which I think is really stupid, to be quite honest with you guys. And it's it's kind of a slap in the face because we we over here in the states we're saying, you know, stop the you know stop hating against Asian people, but then here you guys are saying that you guys don't want our people to wear Black Lives Matter shirts. Like we're in this fight together, so to speak, and I just. I feel like for me, because, you know, I watch the Olympics. I watch the Olympics. I don't watch the Winter Olympics, but I do watch the Summer Olympics, and I watch it for, you know, the gymnastics, mainly basketball. Okay, it's my favorite sport. And it's going to be interesting for me if they're saying that the athletes cannot wear Black Lives Matter apparel. I don't understand. I really, again, I don't understand it. Like I said, it's just, it's just it feels like everything in this day and age today it's politicized it's just a statement it's just saying hey black lives matter and it's not like we're coming over to their you know going over to japan and saying you know um protesting in the street saying black lives matter it's just so that it can be on be broadcast i mean i just don't i really don't understand it i don't it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But you guys, feel free to let me know what you guys think about that. Do you agree with it? If you agree with it, let me know why you agree with it. If you disagree with it, let me know that as well. And also let me know what you guys, since they are saying now that they can't wear Black Lives Matter apparel, will you guys be watching the Tokyo Olympics? Where are you guys going to watch them in the, in the begin? Where are you guys going to watch them to begin with it? Let me know in the comment section below and let us move on to the next story. All right, you guys, let's talk about a little bit of relationship news. It's so funny. I typed up my notes, but I have not looked at my notes at all because I actually knew everything that I wanted to talk about. But let's talk about some relationship news. I'm not going to talk about the first couple that's on my news. Let's talk about the second couple that's on my news. Khloe Kardashian and Tristan Thompson. <laughs> Girl, this man continues to make you look foolish and stupid out here in these streets. And you keep taking him back, which I don't get it. I really don't get it. I mean, a penis must be, his penis must be like spectacular. I don't understand. I just don't understand it. So you had this whole situation with the Jordan, you had the whole Jordan Woods situation where they didn't even do anything, but you guys have basically ostracized that girl because of Tristan. And Chloe ended up taking him back after that situation. 
But again, what, do I, what did I just say? They ostracized Jordan. They talk shit about Jordan. But you ended up taking this dumbass fool back. But you know what? That was her business. So now there's this new girl. I think her name is Sydney Chase. I, I think that's why I saw her name. So Sydney is saying that she and Tristan had an affair with each other. Now she's saying that Tristan told her that he and Chloe were not together. I believe it. He's saying that it's a lie. He sent her a cease and desist to two email addresses. So the other day, I think this was actually yesterday, she was saying that she did not get the cease and desist. But then she did say, then she came back and said, you know what, I did, it is in my email. I did get the cease and desist, but I'm not adhering to that cease and desist. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> she ain't, you know what? I'm gonna assume this girl has absolutely nothing to lose. Now I know his baby mama actually came out as well. The one that he broke up, the one that he left when she was in her last trimester and got with Chloe. So she came out and I know she said that there have been some ladies that have been in her DMs as well. I wonder why did the girls go to her DMs and not Chloe's. But this Sydney girl, she and Chloe were DMing each other. And I know one of the DMs, she didn't show everything that was in the DMs, but one DM from Chloe said, can we not, can, you know, this not go public, but it did. Ah, Chloe, Chloe, Chloe. You know, with Chloe, I, it's a lack of self-confidence for her. I, I just think that she has low self-esteem and it's really sad because she has a daughter and I hope that she's teaching her daughter to love herself. But how can you do that when you're with a man that disrespects you for one? So your daughter's gonna grow up and see this stuff. And then Sydney Chase said that Tristan reached out to her the day after their baby's third birthday. That is disrespectful as hell. So you and Chloe just celebrated True's third birthday and then the next day you hit this girl up. Ah, how the cookie crumbles. Disgusting. But you know what, if Chloe likes it, I love it. But the interesting thing when it comes to Chloe is that, you know, we all know the plastic surgery that Chloe has had. We see the work on her face. We see her body. She's definitely had that done. And it's, it's really interesting when it comes to the Kardashians. They get these quote unquote bodies that attract these men that are no good, by the way. But, you know, they have the typical shape of a black woman. Now, their shapes are not like a normal black woman's. Those ant, you know, they go get their lips filled in so that they can be bigger. They go get, um, you know, bigger breasts. Nope, I'm, and I don't want anybody to think, oh, JB, you are attacking. I'm not attacking. I don't have an issue with anybody who gets plastic surgery. I'm just speaking on the Kardashians more specifically, what they've done. They get their lips filled. If they don't have titties, they get their titties done. Their tit they get their breasts done. And then they get their butts done to get, you know, get bigger butts. But then you're doing that to attract or appease a certain type of man. But he doesn't care because he can go get with the next chick who could be built like, um, he could be built like, she could be built like a normal average woman. She could have, you know, she could be small in stature, you know, not don't have the biggest don't have the biggest breast has a, you know don't have the biggest ass whatever he goes get with any regular chick whereas you've done morphed your body into something that's not human like to appease him it just doesn't make any sense to me and that's why i say i feel like with, when it comes to chloe chloe just really just lacks self-confidence that's really what it is and you know people always say but you know she saw what people have said about her on social media okay like people say a lot and you know i will i will give her that one teensy weensy thing people do say the most disgusting things on social media about people but if you if you like yourself if you love yourself and you're comfortable in your body what people say on social media about your body shouldn't affect you to the point where you go and just alter your body Altering your body should be about, if you do get any kind of elective surgery, that should be in, because you internally, because internally you want to do that, not because of the criticism that comes from other people who don't even know you. And 
probably you, you more nine times out of ten you probably look better than them on your worst day that's just you know my thinking process like why would you let why would you let what trolls say on social media affect how you look at yourself and feel about yourself if you don't already think those things about yourself but you know what I don't think I mean I don't I'm not gonna say I don't think I, I'm pretty positive Chloe is not leaving him like I know at one point I saw a picture of her with a ring on her finger so I'm like oh are they engaged good luck with that one so then let's talk about the next couple um Bill Gates and Melinda Gates so earlier this week it was um announced that after 27 years of marriage Bill Gates and Melinda Gates will be getting a divorce oh that's a lot of money to split up Ooh. And I know that they're saying that divorce is not, you know, it's not an amicable divorce at this point. Because I know that they're saying, you know, she and the family are upset with him. I don't forget what they said they were upset with him about, but they're upset with him. Then on top of that, there's no prenup between Bill and Melinda. So, oh God, will she get half of his fortune? Oh God, that's going to be, yeah, that divorce is going to get really ugly and fast. Now, they won't have to deal with anything in the matter of child support because all of their kids are grown, but it's just going to be that fortune. Ooh. Yeah. You know, I did see on social media where the, <laughs> the Claremont twins hopped in his DMs. I'm like, dude, don't respond to that DM because the last man that was with one of them Claremont twins, he ended up, I'm not saying that she killed him. But he ended up dead and she went on a shopping spree with his credit card. And she ended up in jail because of it. And I was just like, girl, I guess, I'm like, was jail a vacation for you? Like, you do realize if he were to get with you, you signing a prenup. It's just going to be keep it real with you on that one. But, um, yeah, let's, let me see if I got anything else that I need to talk about. I think I hit it. Let's, did we talk about everything? Let's see if we talked about everything. Yep, Candy, Bill and Melinda, Chloe. Yep. I think we discussed everything this week, guys. Um, I'm gonna look and see if there's anything else that we need to talk about. If there is, we'll I'll add it to this or I'll do a um I'll do a trending topics. Is there anything else that I want to talk about? I don't think so. I don't think so. But if there is, I'll edit it in. And you guys, I'll edit it in. But um, as always, you guys, do me a solid favor. Like this video, leave your comments, and subscribe to this channel. And hit that notification bell button so you guys are aware of when I drop anything else. Share this video. And until the next one, you guys, stay safe. Take care of yourselves. Remember, wash your hands, wear your mask, and socially distance. And stay blessed, and we'll get through this together. And once again, to all the mothers out there, happy Mother's Day to you, to you ladies. And I will see you guys again on Sunday for... Real Housewives of Atlanta reunion part three. Thank God it's over. Married to Medicine and for Pose. And um, that's it, you guys. So there won't be a Ready to Love this Friday. So you guys, we won't be talking about a Ready to Love this Friday. But I'll see you guys later. Bye, guys.